Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Sweet Girl. Sweet Girl is an American action thriller that tells the story of a man named Ray Cooper, as well as his daughter, Rachel, who are both reeling from the loss of his wife and her mother, who dies early on in the movie due to cancer. It's inferred that she could have survived her ordeal with cancer if she had access to an experimental drug being produced by Bioprime that was on the verge of release, but at the last minute, Bioprime pulls out and withholds its release to the general public, which unfortunately results in the death of Ray's wife. After being introduced to a rabbit hole that sees Bioprime's CEO being complicit in a variety of crimes, Ray decides to take matters into his own hands and exact justice upon the people he feels are responsible for his wife's death. If this story sounds familiar to you, chances are it's because you've already seen this exact same storyline play out in two or three other movies before this one. It's just another generic revenge thriller that's led by even more generic characters. Jason Momoa plays a lead role of Ray Cooper in this movie, and I think he did a decent enough job with the material that he was given to work with here, but despite his best efforts, his character is still criminally underbaked. The whole reason why his character kicks off his murderous manhunt is all because of a hunch based on the words of someone else who he barely knows. I'm not an expert in psychology by any means, but I highly doubt that any sane person would overreact this strongly to that kind of evidence. Even more confusing is the fact that his character waits two years before finally taking action against Bioprime's CEO and all the other people that are supposedly involved. Why did he take so long to do something? Don't you think that he'd want to strike while the iron was still hot, so to speak? In this case, the iron being Bioprime's experimental drug? There were just a lot of weird things about his character that I didn't understand, and that would have been fine if his character was at least a little bit more memorable in the personality department, but sadly that's not the case. Ray's daughter Rachel is even worse as a character compared to him. If it hadn't been for what happens towards the end of the movie, there'd be no point in having her involved in its story to begin with. Rachel constantly causes problems for Ray throughout the story. She's always being nosy and getting up in her father's grill when she has no business doing so, and throws a bad attitude when she's told to back off. I honestly have more trouble coming up with things to say about her as a character because there's not a whole lot else to say, apart from that the Guns N' Roses reference that's attached to her character is extremely cheesy and, in my opinion, based on her actions and attitude in this movie, completely undeserved. Thankfully, because this is primarily an action movie, its action scenes are entertaining enough that they do help to offset the blandness of the story and the characters, at least at first. There's a ton of great visceral brawls that are featured in a variety of settings, and all these brawls feature different types of stunt choreography and props that are used from scene to scene, so it never feels like you're watching the same fight over and over again, which I do appreciate. Unfortunately, there are moments where the brawls suffer from bouts of shaky cam, as well as footage being filmed way up closer than they need to be. I have no idea why filmmakers continue to do this today. It's not entertaining to watch Jason Momoa's butt being filmed really up close while he's beating some one up halfway off frame. There are a few gunfights and car chases thrown in to mix up the action a little bit, but they all feel bland in their approach. Apart from the scene where an ambulance gets toppled over during a chase, which I thought was really well done, the rest of the action scenes just don't stand out to me. If the story had stayed consistent in its approach from beginning to end, Sweet Girl would have been a mediocre but fun action flick to tune your brain out to. Sadly, however, the story is where the whole thing falls apart. There are little things that bother me, like the cop character that Rachel talks to on and off throughout the movie, and for some reason the movie makes her out to be this quasi-mother figure toward Rachel that's trying to look out for her, and I don't understand why. It's just really weird the way her character is written. Then there's the generic multi-layered corporate conspiracy that's fueling Ray's journey throughout the movie, and how there always seems to be one villain that's higher up than another. Every time a villain was killed off in this movie, it kept reminding me of Toad from Super Mario Brothers, as if to say, thank you Ray, but our boss is in another castle. Those are just some of the little things I could think of that bother me about this movie. By themselves, they're not that big of a deal, and ordinarily I'd be able to forgive them, but there's a huge plot twist that's thrown in this movie about the last half hour or so that makes all the bad things about it that much worse. Instead of playing its card straight and trying to tell a simple story, it goes for shock value and unnecessarily complicates the way in which the characters are involved with the narrative, and it just doesn't work. 
The worst thing about this plot twist is that it has virtually no impact on the story at hand. Most of the characters at that point in the movie are still alive, and the family's mission remains the same. So it really begs the question, why even have a plot twist, especially one this unnecessary? Overall, Sweet Girl is a disappointing action thriller that shows initial promise, but it left me feeling sour when it was all said and done. If you're purely invested in just the action scenes and are willing to forgive the generic story and characters as well as the ridiculous decisions that are made for both of those things, you might be able to have some fun when watching this movie, but even then, the action scenes aren't that good. I think Sweet Girl had the potential to be a decent, if forgettable, action movie, but its plot twist completely unravels its story and aggravates its already existing problems to the point that I can't recommend this movie to anyone except the most hardcore of Jason Momoa fans. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap up my review of Sweet Girl. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the fantasy anime, The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf. Bye bye!